So hello there everybody and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, The 7 P's, How to Plan, Promote and Present Your Webinar. My name is Samson and I'm joined today by my colleague Lizzie Lonsdale. Good morning everyone. And a warm welcome again to those who joined us for any of our previous webinars this week and an equally warm welcome to any of anyone here that's joined us for the first time today for our Digital Week 2016. So I'd just like to start off with just a little bit about myself. So um, as you can see on screen, um, I am a digital marketing consultant for SuccessFlow and certified by the Institute of Digital and Direct Marketing in Social Media Strategy. So um, I hope to share a bit of this kind of knowledge and expertise around social media um, and webinar marketing as it plays a key role a little bit later on this session. And um, Lizzie, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Samson. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Lizzie Lonsdale. I'm a digital marketing executive here at SuccessFlow. So um, I look after some of our key clients uh, managing their marketing campaigns. So a good mix of these being webinar projects, as well as email campaigns and content marketing projects as well. Um, I'm certified in email marketing by the Institute of Digital Marketing. So really my skills lie in the promotion of webinars via email and also looking at landing pages and just optimizing those as highly as we can. Great, so we're just going to go through the agenda and some of the things that we're going to go through on today's session. Thanks, Samson. Um, so really, we're going to start off covering what is a webinar, going back to basics, defining really when they can be used and looking at some of the benefits as well. And then we'll delve into the seven P's. So the first one being planning. Uh, so a really crucial part of the process, planning. So we'll cover that a bit later. Um, next, preparation, what needs to go in uh, to create in your webinar, how to produce quality promotional content, then looking at the promotion and what channels to use for that, best practices when presenting your webinar, and then finally reviewing the performance of your webinar. And then the last point, um, how to progress by choosing the right step. Okay, so we're just gonna start by running a, a quick poll here. Uh, so if you could just answer um, the question on screen, what is your primary reason for joining the webinar today? Um, so we've got four um, answers there. You might need help creating a webinar marketing strategy. Uh, you might want to understand the importance of webinars as a marketing tool. Maybe you need some help generating leads from a webinar or you're not really sure how a webinar works or what it really is. So really interesting there. A mix, but most people wanting to understand the importance of webinars as a marketing tool. So that's perfect, really. We're going to be running through kind of every asset, every facet, sorry, of a webinar um, and what goes into the planning, the promotion and pre presenting it as well. So um, hopefully we'll answer your questions today. Great. So um, we're going to kick off with actually what is a webinar? So um, uh, as per definition, so um, to put it simply, a webinar is an online seminar or presentation and it, and it can be it can be used to um, fulfill a number of functions. So webinars are great for sharing content. Now, content marketing is a really fast growing market and webinars can be utilized to share the latest and greatest content. So whether that might be infographics, white papers or ebooks, it's whatever works for you, really. Um, secondly, webinars are great for showcasing products and services. Now, um, some of you may know, but most webinar platforms now offer the flexibility of allowing screen sharing, the streaming of video, and that makes product demos extremely easy and more importantly, interactive. And then as you can see there on screen, educate or instruct your target market. Um, webinars are great for this. Um, so you can easily display yourself as a thought leader in your market. And they're a great way of sharing marketing industry insights. So many of our client webinars that we've run here at SuccessFlow, they've been based on white papers. Now, um, instead of uh, a white paper can be seen as a little bit boring, for example, like maybe reams and reams of information. Now, webinars are all about cutting that information down and offering an interactive and intelligent way of sharing your key findings. And um, of course, demonstrating your thought leadership in the marketplace is very important. And then finally, engaging and interacting with your potential leads. Now, webinars are great for this as well. So from a marketing perspective, webinars allow for the interpersonal contact um, between your company and maybe your clients or prospects. And that makes you seem a lot more humanized. So you, you've joined us here today. Um, so rather than just uh, successful being an entity which produce content, you can hear me today, you can ask questions and interact with us. So it's all about um, um, creating an engagement between myself and you. So we're going to move on now and explore some of the key benefits for webinar. So webinars really should form part of your overall content framework. Now, we use webinars here at SuccessFlow to share our latest content. And the reason being is that they're great to start interacting with your audience. Now, it's important to know from the research that we've seen, webinar marketing is growing and um, it should really form part of your framework. So 
around 60%, as you can see there on screen, uh, of companies that we speak to are running webinars as part of their content strategy. So um, it, maybe if you aren't doing it at this moment in time, it's something that you could maybe throw into your promotional mix. Now, webinars are all about kind of starting that communication journey. Um, and it's about building relationships with clients and prospects alike. And for our B2B audience here today on today's session, um, it's important to note here that webinars are becoming an essential part of lead generation. So looking at our, at our own company again, um, we generate approximately about 70% of our leads from webinars, which really shows the value as a content marketing tool. Not to mention um, the quality of the leads that we see coming through as well are really high ranking. Now, obviously, coming out of just a lead, it's a great way to create new business. Um, we don't just see um, webinars as part of the lead generation stage. We also use webinars a little bit further down the funnel. For example, our sales team, um, they often use webinars to run smaller focused uh, group sessions. Um, and it just shows how flexible they can be, really. And then, uh, as you can see on screen, list building and audience creation. We would always recommend using webinars for this, um, particularly if you've got a small database. And then maintaining that close communication uh, with your client. So um, product launches, for example, you might want to do a monthly webinar um, for your customers to come along to. Um, it's a great way to see customer engagement rather than just looking at it from lead gen perspective. So you can see here on the uh, graph on screen, um, this is a study done this year. Um, so it's quite up to date information um, by the CMI. Now, webinars effectiveness is ranked second um, with 66% of respondents rating uh, B2B market, uh, the B2B marketing tactic as high. So I think this really shows a change in nature towards webinars and the validity of running a good webinar program. So I'm going to move on and talk about how you can overcome some of the challenges that are seen in uh, as webinars as a marketing tool. Now, uh, webinars are gaining in popularity and it's caused many businesses to actually invest into this resource. Um, so the first challenge people are finding is that webinars are complex marketing tools. Now, they do re require detailed planning. So to combat this, we would recommend that you allocate this planning to a specific member of your marketing team. Now, Lizzie will go through some of the roles involved a little bit further on in the webinar, um, but that's very important to take note of. Now, presenting relevant information can be quite a challenge. So um, particularly for those businesses that might have a lot of content available, so in order to create great content, we recommend that you refine your content over time and change it based on current news and trends. So me and Lizzie um, actually presented this webinar um, previously, um, about a year ago now, and we've updated uh, this webinar to kind of suit some of the changes that have happened in the industry. Um, of course, webinars are time intensive, um, so we recommend um, a webinar campaign to start and finish within about three months. So um, you can see this takes quite meticulous preparation time. Um, so one thing to actually combat this, uh, we here at SuccessFlow use Gantt charts. And um, these are a great way to help structure your organization. And it keeps it quite visual as well. Um, now, a lot of people um, who have attended previous sessions have been really interested in finding out about maximizing sign up rates. And it's um, a key challenge of um, kind of webinar marketing. So we are going to give you um, a few helpful tips later on in the webinar, which will help you with this. And then finally, choosing the right channels to market your webinar is vital. So define your target audience, <coughs> reach out to them using the right channels, and then you've got to really understand who your audience is to be able to do this. So um, in the promote section a little bit later on the webinar, we will go through this in a little bit more detail. Perfect, thanks Samson. Okay, so um, going into the planning section here. So as we've said, planning, it really is one of the key ingredients to a successful webinar. Um, so I'm just gonna go through here what we really need to think about in the planning phase. Um, so firstly, deciding on that webinar theme. So we wouldn't really recommend plucking this out of thin air, maybe because it's a topic you like the sound of. It should really form part of your overall content framework, which should ultimately be based on your business objectives. So the webinar is just one part of that framework or theme, really. For example, this webinar that we're presenting today, we've sent out some emails, social posts, we've written some blogs to promote it, and we've also written a guide to webinar marketing that ties in. So we'll be able to share that with you later on, actually. Um, so defining the theme based on what you're trying to achieve and who you're trying to reach, that's the real starting point, and then you can start to build out from there. So really, a good place to start is to look at what you already have. 
For example, you might have a piece of content that you've already marketed, maybe a guide or a white paper that has been really successful with your audience. And this can sometimes be a really good starting point. You know, it fulfills your audience's needs or maybe solves uh, one of their particular problems and it's content that's in demand. So why not repurpose it really, um, create a webinar? You'll of course need to tailor it to the format of a webinar, make sure it brings value to your customers and educates rather than trying to sell, which is really, really important. So as we've said, this always needs to come back to your marketing goals. So you'll also need to set KPIs for success and we recommend setting these in the planning phase. You might want to generate a set number of leads or it might be that we want to increase our reach on social or maybe increase the database by X amount or potentially we want to see how many of those are converting into sales opportunities. So set these out at the start so you have something to work towards and to measure against. So scheduling, really important with webinars. Once you've set the date, obviously you can't go back. Um, you started to get those registrations in, so you can't change it. So make sure you set out enough time to prepare and promote your webinar. It's really crucial. And we'd recommend no less than three weeks of promotion. And then before promotion really even begins, you need to prepare, prepare all your promotional content. So your emails, your landing pages and forms that go on those landing pages. You need to write your social copy, get your blogs ready, even your webinar presentation, which is something that you need to think about early on. So don't leave yourself short. We can't stress that enough and plan out really well in advance. Um, you could use a project management system or even a simple calendar to plot out what needs to happen and when. OK, so coming on to roles. So who needs to be involved? So um, we really say that this should include four people, um, each with their own skills that they can bring to the table. So the obvious person, firstly, is the webinar presenter or maybe presenters. So there's two of us here today. Um, so whether it is one or two people, you need the presenter to take the lead in terms of really understanding the theme. So they should be the expert on the topic, really, be confident speaking so that they can present coherently. And they also need to be available. You have to think about that and have, think about the time to prepare the script and do the test runs and write their speaker notes. So all that should go into the thought when selecting your presenter. So in terms of the person creating the actual content, this could be the same person. Uh, so typically in mine and Samson's case, we've been kind of fully involved in creating the content for the presentation. As he said, we have run this before, so we've updated that. Um, um, we've structured it in terms of the theme, produced the presentation content. We've also written our scripts and decided on the poll questions. So really together, uh, we've decided how it's all going to kind of fit together before we hand it over to the designer. So when we talk about the designer here, um, we're talking about the design team, really. So the designer who is creating the presentation based on the content that you've provided and making it look really visually engaging. And then also as part of that team, the copywriter who writes the copy for each slide. And finally, um, a real key part of the whole webinar process is the moderator. Um, so this is the person who's managing really the whole process from sending out the invitations, managing registrations, organizing rehearsals and, and getting the platform set up. And they'll also be listening in to the live session, dealing with the polls and the questions and answers and making sure everything's really running OK. Um, as presenters, really, we could be speaking to ourselves and we wouldn't really know if the sound was working or if there's any kind of issues, if the screen had frozen. So we've got that moderator, moderator in place, listening in, making sure everything's going as planned. So we've actually got that in place right now. Um, these are live sessions. Let's be honest, mistakes will happen. But it is a live webinar and we want to get it spot on. So that moderator in place can really help. Great. Thanks, Lizzie. Um, so we are going to move on to the preparation stage now. Um, and these are the key decisions that we re that really need to be made at the beginning of the process. So when choosing the best format for your audience, messages and your goals, um, whether you're a beginner or an expert when it comes to webinars, there are different formats to consider. So there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing your webinar style, but you should choose one based on your content and your audience requirements. So the first example is a presenter led webinar. So a good example of this is today's. <laughs> so we're leading this and this leads like um, a great deal of control from our side. So from a webinar marketing perspective, audience led webinars are great for engaging in discussions and uh, leading focus style um, kind of discussions. And these work really well for companies who want to kind of get feedback, possibly from their clients or current customer base. And then thirdly, video presentation. Um, so these kind of webinars are really good to integrate product demos or advertise your products and services, which might be very visual, for example. 
So the second major consideration to, when choosing the right platform, as you can see there on screen, um, it's really important to consider the costs, branding, and the available support and reporting. So there's a multitude of webinar platforms available. Um, so there might be basic offerings such as, um, uh, say, for example, uh, WebEx, um, where it does offer you some kind of um, templates. Um, but you might want to consider a more kind of expert offering, which for, we like go to webinar, for example. So there's a lot of customization available there, and it's the advanced features and analytics, which we're going to show you a little bit later on um, on today's webinar, which might be more suitable for corporations wanting to reach kind of specific target audiences. And the final point that you see there on screen is all about integrating with CRM. It's really important to manage this integration with webinars because um, not just with your CRM, CRM system uh, itself, but also with marketing automation systems. And this is what really takes your webinar to the next level. So um, being prepared with this automation can help the whole process, whether it's from promotion or registration, it makes everything kind of quick and efficient. So um, linking your webinar contacts that sign up from your webinar into your CRM system, this actually allows all the relevant information to be stored in one place. Now, our sales team, um, who'd have us running a webinar every single day if possible, um, they, really, they really want us to have all of this information um, stored in one place. It might be kind of polls or survey responses. It really helps with that sales follow-up process. And, it, um, and, and as opposed to kind of guides and eBooks, for example, webinars give um, sales teams so much more information, which is why they're in such demand from sales teams. So we're going to move on now to the produce section. So once you've planned your webinar and you've prepared for everything, you need to go into the production stage. Now, it's not as simple as you think. Um, we've attended many webinars as well as run them here at SuccessFlow. And some of them have been really good and shows that there's been a lot of effort put into them. Now, others, we would say, kind of look like they've been knocked up in five minutes, for example. There might be a few slides with just a couple of words on there. Now, it's all about putting effort in at this stage. Um, so your time is valuable to us. So we really want to produce great content to make sure that you get something out of today's session. So a few tips on how you can do this. So first of all, um, make sure your brand is at the heart of your presentation. You can see here we've got um, branded slides with our contact details on at the bottom there. It's really important that you get that across. Um, you want the presentation to be produced in a way that works well on video. So, for example, today is done in Keynote. Uh, we really like Keynote. It's very nice and clean. But Prezi is good as well. Um, we do recommend uh, people to use Prezi. Um, a few guidelines should be kind of adhered to there. Not too many transitions, for example. Um, so it's really important that you consider all options when producing your content. So you need to think about the time and resources it takes to kind of produce the material. So if we look at today's webinar, um, we initially planned it last year, as I mentioned previously, and we've reworked this content. And it takes roughly about six weeks from kind of whiteboarding this out to um, deciding on what we want to talk about in terms of the seven Ps. It then gets handed over to the copywriter and then to the design team, as Lizzie said, about, said earlier on in um, this webinar. So it's not just about producing the asset itself, the presentation. There are a lot of other things that go around that. So, for example, emails. Emails are a big part of um, kind of lead generation for webinars. And Lizzie's going to cover some of this in the promote section. And then obviously from there, we want to go on um, to consider nurture assets. So um, you'll, you'll notice um, our nurture assets will be sent out after this webinar. So there'll be um, an email for those that attended and an email that, for those that didn't attend. Um, it's about sending your slides out and sending out further content that might be of um, kind of relevance. So um, we're going to move on to the next section now. So over to you, Lizzie. Thanks, Samson. OK, so we're going to move on to the promote section here. Um, so promotion is really vital aspect of any campaign because ultimately it's going to affect the targets and the KPIs that you've set in your planning stages. And it's how we're going to get the people onto our webinar to actually be a part of that. Um, so this slide, we're going to focus on five major promotional touch points that we really see at SuccessFlow as the main drivers for generating webinar interest which will then obviously result in better signups. So first of all, uh, we have email. So email is considered the grandfather of digital communication, but it really, really shouldn't be underestimated. It does still account for a good 56% of all webinar leads generated. So what we really recommend is a four touch email send. Uh, so the first promotional email should go to your full list 
And then we would resend that first email again to all those who hadn't opened that email one week later with a change of subject line to really try and spark that interest in a different way, perhaps if that first subject line hadn't. We would then send another promotional email one week before the webinar date, suppressing those people that have signed up, of course, because we don't want to bother them now they are signed up. Um, so this would offer a different message to the first email to, again, spark interest in a different way, perhaps a more visual email, a different spin on the subject, for example. And then finally, an email one day before the webinar to pick up any of those last people who might now have some time in their diaries. They're kind of ready to register and they're ready to participate. So through our platform, um, we also set up triggered emails to be sent once a contact has signed up and is no longer really part of that promotional pool. Uh, so we'd send them one to confirm their registration and provide those joining details and another triggered email one hour before the webinar begins just to provide that reminder. So you'll, you'll probably have noticed that come in an hour before the webinar, hopefully. Um, we just find it picks up those people that may have forgotten, may not have put the reminder in their uh, email and it just gives them those handy uh, details to log in just before the webinar. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, um, social should play a massive role in terms of promoting your webinar. So um, there's quite a few tactics that can be employed here, but some that I feel like should be focused on um, is LinkedIn groups, for example. So um, uh, about 70% of leads generated on social come from LinkedIn groups, um, believe it or not. Um, they are um, really engaged places for people to kind of find and search for content. So we'd recommend finding some industry specific groups, joining them and starting to promote your content out to them groups. Um, for Twitter, um, it might you might consider wanting to create some Twitter cards that you can do um, through the Twitter ad platform. So, uh, again, these pr prove to have a lot better engagement rate than just a standard tweet, for example. Now, there's a whole other host of tactics um, for those that are B2C on the line. Um, we probably. Um, kind of advise you to use Facebook um, and particularly um, integrating PPC. So um, uh, pay-per-click is really important if you've got a, quite a low reach on social. Um, so I, Facebook have a great um, ad platform, as do Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, but it's all about making sure you know who, you who you're actually targeting, who your audience is. Um, otherwise, you might be paying um, for people to click on your ads who don't fall into that kind of key criteria. So really important to know there. Thanks, Samson. OK, I'll just pick up on blogs there. Uh, so blogs are a really good way to introduce the challenges on your webinar. Um, this could create awareness and then you can push people to your landing page to sign up. So definitely something to consider as part of your promotional mix. And finally, speak. So word of mouth, invite your prospects, get calling on the phone and, and let people know. If you've never run a webinar before and your prospects haven't seen anything like this maybe from you before, they're going to be really interested and they're going to want to find out more about what you're doing. And then uh, on the whole, this is a really interesting fact at the bottom from On24 Benchmarking. Uh, it shows that registration can increase by 36% if a webinar is promoted more than seven days in advance. So really reinforcing there that the key is to start early. OK, so we're going to move on now just to show you a few of the promotional assets that we've created here at Successflow uh, across our clients and uh, our own content as well. So as you can see, um, from presentations to landing pages to social media, so that's a pulse post there, I think, and an email invite and email nurture. Um, hopefully you can see there the assets have all been created in a way that really maximizes conversion rate. Um, the images are bold, they're impactful, the information is succinct, we're not trying to cram too much information into kind of one page, and it's all on brand, importantly. Okay, so if we move on to present now. So hopefully your webinar is really well planned out, you've rehearsed it, you've produced a really interesting presentation, and you've promoted it to the right audience, so you've got all those people ready to watch and ready to listen. So we want to make sure that we can really present it as well, because that's obviously important. So some people will be more comfortable than others. It's really about being prepared, making sure slides and script are ready in advance. And of course, those couple of dry runs, which we've mentioned previously. You definitely want to encourage the use of Q&A. Uh, it's a really great way to start interaction and get answering some questions. Uh, generally, we get quite a lot of questions at the end of the session. So please do leave some if you get a chance today and we'll hopefully try and answer some of those at the end. Uh, questions really are just a great way to get the dialogue going. Running polls as well is really good. Um, we take generally two or three polls per webinar, usually one to kind of set the scene, uh, get a feel for why people have attended today. So you can kind of start to um, 
tailor your webinar to your attendees. And then another one to find out maybe some key challenges, for example, or which areas people have an interest in. So getting your audience to help you create other ideas for content, what other topics they want to learn about, really getting them to um, start talking to you, get, telling you what they want to consume, and, and you can really kind of take that information and provide them what, with what they want. So preparation, being prepared, that's key. Um, mentioned it a few times, but practicing and doing those test runs, really important. We also don't want it to seem too staged. We want it to come across as natural as possible. So don't sit and kind of read off a script word for word. Um, you could use cue cards or perhaps bullet points for the key sections. It's quite a handy tip there. Um, but everyone works differently. It's important to kind of think about. So it's what really works best for your presenter and what makes you feel comfortable. If you do encounter any technical issues, try not to stress about it too much. These things do happen in a live session. Uh, you can always edit them out for the video recording and you can promote that afterwards. No one need know. Um, so having your moderator in place will make sure that any technical issues or problems will be picked up quickly and dealt with. So just to reinforce how important that moderator role is. OK, thanks, Lizzie. Um, we're going to actually move on to the next section, which is all about performance. Now, with any marketing tool, you should be benchmarking your performance. So not just against your competitors, but actually against yourself. Um, so this can um, be used to continually improve the webinar process. And you can see where your shortfalls are. And then you can actually see areas which you might be particularly excelling in that you want to kind of capitalize upon. So at the end of the webinar, you have a few options. So the first option is that you can run it again. This is exactly what we're doing with today's session, because if there is a demand for your content, it actually makes sense to repeat it. Or you can actually start a series, which is what we've done with Digital Week 2016. So um, that can work really well from a content marketing perspective as well. So um, we often do this with our clients. Um, if there's a high demand, keep running them until that demand runs out. That's quite important. Um, so if we had run this session and we would have got no signups, um, that would be a key indicator for us to kind of let this webinar die, for example. So uh, that's really important to take note of. So um, the report, for example, um, you should uh, consider this when choosing your platform. It is um, the, these detailed reporting and analytics um, that really kind of set apart your performance. So we as a company, as I mentioned before, we use GoToWebinar. And this offers some really detailed analytics. You can see some of the examples on screen. Um, so these are a great way of um, proving to upper level management, for example, um, so that shows the return on investment of a webinar campaign. And then finally, we repurpose in your content. Um, make the most of your webinar content, basically. So don't just use your presentation on the webinar itself. You could recycle it. Maybe um, you could have some. Uh, you could use it for internal knowledge. You could use it um, in a tip sheet guide um, or even a blog post, for example. So um, you'll you'll probably see a mixture of these kind of content styles following on from this session as well. So um, you will notice there has been. Um, uh, an attachment, a handout, handed um, out to you via the GoToWebinar panel, would recommend that you take a look at this. It is our seven P's guide so um, to webinar success. So there's all this information that we've um, got in today's webinar, but also um, some extra mm. helpful advice in there oh, as really? well. Yeah. So we are going to run our second poll now. So um, we just quite like to find out where you currently are at with your webinars. Um, so we're going to launch that poll. And we'll give you a couple of minutes to um, answer those questions. So um, maybe you've not used webinars before, but you'd like to start. Um, or maybe you've got a webinar, but you're not sure how to promote it. Um, or if you've run a webinar and you're not quite sure what to do afterwards. So it's all about the nurture content in which case. Um, or maybe you've got a concept, but you're not sure how to turn it into a webinar. That's quite often the case. It's always interesting. Um, uh, LinkedIn have got a great analogy, um, the turkey analogy, uh -huh. which is kind of your kind of focus piece of content is the turkey. And if um, and when you kind of carve the turkey up, that, that refers to some of the kind of smaller bite sized snackable content that you can get from that. So um, let that run. Um, see a lot of you have voted. Thank you very much. So that's really interesting. 50% mm. of our audience haven't actually used webinars before. So maybe um, hopefully you will have found today's session quite inspiring. Um, so uh, we would like you to get in touch, obviously, if you have. Um, we've got a few case studies, actually, to show you um, if we'd like to um, close them poll results, um, which will really show you how you can actually progress. Thanks, Samson. Um, so I'll uh, just move on here to show you an example of a case study, uh, a webinar that we've run with one of our clients here at SuccessFlow. So this was for Charities Aid Foundation, um, one of our kind of key clients, a charity bank based in London. 
So our brief really based on their needs was to position CAF as a trusted advice source really, um, outline the benefits of their service and equip charities with knowledge to really increase their fundraising efforts and so on, as you'll see the more needs on screen there. So the solution, um, we uh, proposed a series of three webinars positioned at the charity sector. We automated CAF's marketing processes, um, including implementing a lead scoring model to really prioritize and segment the leads. Uh, we promoted the webinars through a number of channels really um, based on CAF, um, including LinkedIn, Twitter, and email. So looking at the results, um, the campaign generated a total of 2008 webinar registrations and we had an overall level of positive feedback of 97%. So really, really pleased with that one. Uh, the KPI targets were exceeded by almost 80% and we did get some real traction from social. So you can see there a total of 1,060 people visiting the campaign landing page from social media alone. Mm, I think that shows a real value there and um, it, I think this case study is a great way for those um, that might be thinking that your audience might be a bit too niche for a webinar. Now this was quite a, a, a targeted audience for people mm. working in the fundraising sector uh, and to have such a good uplift um, within this industry um, really set CAF apart from their competitors. So um, if, you're, if you're thinking that you might have a niche audience um, definitely try our webinars it's something that could really work for you. Definitely. So we're going to summarise what we've been through today. So um, first of all, plan. So it's all about creating your webinar strategy. Look at your existing content and see if it works um, for your business before you decide to actually create one. So next, prepare, making sure you prepare, really, really crucial, uh, and making sure you prepare a webinar, which is also right for your, your audience. Um, in this section as well, choosing the best platform for you and thinking about automating those processes. Moving on to produce, um, so it's all about producing something that's not just engaging and compelling, but something that's also quite visually impactful on screen. Uh, you've got to keep your audience engaged, so it's all about getting it right in the production stage. So promote, remember to really do your research here, um, select your channels for promotion through, through really that careful research, where's your target market, identify where they want to consume that content. And just to reiterate here really, we recommend no less than three weeks to promote a webinar. Um, presenting, obviously present with confidence. Um, it'd be an awful shame if you um, kind of produced a really great content and you put lots of planning in and then you kind of fell at the final hurdle. So um, presenting, uh, make sure that you get this right. And then performance, analyzing your results is key. So listen back, evaluate your performance, um, really think about how you could do better next time. Maybe look at your poll and survey of results um, and all the leads that you've generated, hopefully lots. Um, what channels have worked best potentially? Um, it is really crucial here to take a step back once it's all over, analyze, learn, and, and really optimize your future webinar campaigns. So those of you that might be um, a little bit better at maths than me, you might be thinking, hmm, we've only had six P's. So the seven P is all about progressing and how we can help you take the next step. So um, a little bit about us as a company, um, for those that might be interested. Um, we were kind of uh, born about five years ago out of the need for companies um, with help with their marketing automation. Now, today we have a full service offering um, around B2B. So uh, we do look at strategy and consultancy. Um, Delivery, so um, actual campaigns and webinar campaigns do fall under this. And then platform consultancy, which is kind of more around the technical and the automation side of things, which helps um, kind of tie all this in nicely together. Um, so you might, if you're considering ebooks, guides, infographics or videos, these are some just of some of the other kind of service offerings which we do have. Thank you very much for joining us both. Um, we hope you've enjoyed today's session. So thank you very much. Thanks very much, everyone.